I'm gonna start with the hard part. Like two years ago, as Bernard has, has just said, I was fired from the company where I was working and I felt like a failure. I felt like I wasn't a good enough designer. I was working in UX and user interface. So I felt like I'm not good enough. I, I fail at this. What's, what's wrong with me? And, and two years after that, I'm working at Asana, which is one of the top companies in collaboration software. I'm working with people that are the best in their field. I'm working with Justin Rosenstein, with uh, Dustin Moskowitz, and the design team of Asana and the product man project managers. They are all great. They come from companies like Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Twitter. And when you work in the same room with these people, you feel like, where am I, where am I doing here? Am I too small for this? And then you realize the culture that they have, they bring you up into it. And then you feel like you are way more in power and you're better than you ever thought you could be. So what has changed in two years for me to feel, to go from um, like rock bottom to, to feel as great as I do right now? And I think it's the process that the product design team has and the culture of Asana. And that's effectively making my designs better and making my process easier to go with, uh, having less friction and coming up with ideas faster and having faster iterations. So um, who knows what Asana is or has ever used Asana here? Okay, we have okay, enough people. For those of you who don't know Asana, it's a collaboration tool. Um, it's basically um, a way of working with a bunch of people at the same time without having to go into meetings every, every other day to get to know what your teammates are doing and to get to know what you are supposed to be doing. And we've been working in, in teams since the beginning of time, and since we were monkeys, we were like working together to, to hunt and gather stuff. And when Dustin and Justin found the company, they, they came up with this, this motto. It sounds grandiose and, and utopic, like help humanity thrive by enabling all teams to work together effortlessly. Um, I, wanna, I wanna mark here that the, the key piece here to me is uh, work together in teams because the team is what builds something. It's like what, uh, we're all working in teams every day. From the moment you go to the grocery store with your partner to buy whatever you want for dinner today, to the moment that you make a startup and you try to, to come up with a new app that it's gonna change the world. So, this is Asana. Um, this, a basically a basic task, uh, basic my task pane where you have the task that I'm supposed to be working on. I have the due dates and I have which ones of these are assigned to me. And if I need to comment anything, I put it there. If any files are supposed to be to go here, they go in the task itself. So it's a great way of working together, but I'm not here to sell the product. That's if you wanna use Asana, you just go into the website. It's free up to 15 users. You should totally check it out. And the, the seed of this uh, tool was born on Facebook. Well, Dustin and Justin were working together and they realized they were spending so much time on meetings that they could not do their work. Dustin was being the CTO there, but he could not get his team to work as he wanted it to be and he felt like he was wasting his time. So they created a small task management tool uh, inside of Facebook that to this day as I think it's almost like seven years after that, Facebook is still using it and it's still working on it and improving it. And at some point, Dustin and Justin got together and they ran out of Facebook and built their own company. And I'm happy to say that I'm working there and it's, it's great to collaborate with other people. So if you're working in a team or even if you're a freelance, try to use it. And if you don't use Asana, try another uh, collaboration tool. It's, your work is gonna like, becomes so much easier. And the best thing of it is we work at Asana to build the same software. We use the software every day, so we are the first users. 
So whenever there's an uh, issue with it, we realize it first. We're the first ones. And every pain that our users might have, we have it first because we are using it. And we like to say that we are a collection of peers. We are like, in a way, in a metaphor, we are like Lego pieces. Each of us is very specialized. We have different shapes. We have different um, uh, objectives and goals. But when we came all together, we built something that makes it way more meaningful and is way more powerful than uh, the combination of one plus one plus one plus one. So I like to consider us as Lego pieces. Also because there's no hierarchy. There's no a Lego piece that is better than any other here. All of them are as important as the rest of them. And they trust each other. They need each other in order to be successful. So you have to trust your peers. And the peers, like the collection of peers, like becomes a team. And I want to talk to you about the, the product design team. That's the team where I'm working on. And the building blocks of the product design team are the use, user research, uh, the PMs. So user research, uh, they, I like to consider them as the scouts. They, they go outside, they talk to the users, they check out all the trends, and they come out to us and tell us, like, this is what people need, this is what they're demanding, and this is what's not working. And the project managers get all that information, and then we decide which one of these features we're gonna build. And last but not least, the designers that uh, take the, those ideas that come from user research, project managers, and we make them happen. We make them, we build the mockups that later on engineering is gonna make them into reality into the app. What I like about this relationship is everyone in this, in this product, in this, brand, in this team, is at the same level. There is no uh, leader that tells everyone what to do. We decide as a collective which is the feature that we're going to build. And if a designer has, a, has an issue and thinks like, this is not how, this is a bad UI design, this is not going to work, it has as much power to decide as the, as the project manager. So the project manager is not there to micromanage everyone, to tell us what to do. They're there to, to help us do our job. So together, design and PMs, after user research tells what to do, we go out in missions. And we end up like talking with engineers, joining forces to build that, that feature, that idea that we had in mind. And that collaboration sometimes is, uh, has a little bit of friction, engineering and design, as you may know, but I'm not gonna talk about that. That's a whole other uh, talk. So we, what we do is we divide usually the time in episodes. For, uh, an episode for us is four months. At the beginning of the episode, we decide what we're gonna work on, and at the end of the episode, we deliver, and maybe we need two episodes to build a feature, so we work on that for more than, for more than four months. And on those episodes, we divide our, our forces in little teams like monetization team or mobile team, and usually those teams are composed by one PM, one designer, and three engineers. That's like the base but sometimes we have two PMs working in a, in, in a project team, and we have five engineers. That, that depends on the project, and always changes. And this is a little bit the timeline of a project. As I said, first we get an idea. Um, sometimes it comes from the users, sometimes it comes from inside of the company. We have a project inside of Asana that's called the Product Opportunities Project, and if anyone at the company at any given time, out of the 200 employees that we have, goes in and says like, I think that we should have a carousel for images because every time that I open an image, it opens in a new tab, and that's annoying to me. So he will go there and create a task in that project. And we ourselves, the rest of uh, the employees, will boot it up or down, and then we decide which ones. We would decide if it's good enough, it has a lot of votes, we probably will build it. And sometimes those ideas come from outside and end up in the same project. So we have a mix of ideas that are self-proposed and proposed from the users. And for example, we have the dashboards. It was a project that the users told us, we want to be able to see how all my projects are doing at the same time, like at a glance, in a visual way. And we build it up. I'm going to show it. 
in the next slide. So first of all comes the idea. The PM gets that idea, talks to user research, and come up with a sort of first briefing, trying to pinpoint what are the goals of this project. After that, we have the, the kickoff. That happens at the beginning of the episode, and, so, and then you, that's when you gather engineering, design, and PM. We put all of them together, and we talk about, these are our goals, this is gonna, what we're gonna build. And engineers there tell, tell them, like, I think I need two months to build this. Uh, design says, I, need, I think I need two weeks to design this in order for it to be awesome. And the PM tries to like, manage that calendar, make it work. And of course, then we design it and we build it. This includes engineering too, comes right here. So this is a way of seeing it, but probably this is easier to understand. I come from the idea that it's outside of the episode. That's when our four, mo four months period starts. That's the end. And it doesn't have to be this structure. It, it's not always cascade. It don't, doesn't go from A to B to C. Sometimes it's just like this. You have the idea, and you have the kickoff. And then engineering starts building the back end, and design starts designing, which is the part that I'm going to talk more about, like how someone that thought that wasn't good enough end up at a company and the process made me feel that I was way better than, than I could be at the beginning. So this, I love this way of working, working in parallel with engineering because it helps you deliver faster. It helps you detect when something is not working right before you are at the end of the episode and it's too late to change anything. And let's, let's see the example of the dashboard. Oh, see, this is what I, what I was talking about. Users came to us, um, high-level users, like managers that wanted to see, how is my project doing? How are my five projects of marketing and all this uh, going on Asana? I, I don't want to go project by project, checking every task, and seeing if we are getting there or not. So user research told us, like, what are their favorite um, graphics that people use? What do they want to see there? So we come up with this idea. We have the name of the project, who is responsible for that project, the latest status update, and how are the tasks. Like they have the number of tasks that are created in the project and the number of tasks that are completed. Um, this way, the way that we build it is first two weeks, I think I was the designer on this actually. First two weeks they build a really fast, easy um, mock-up of this. The, this, the, fine, the finesse and the details of the design was not complete, but it was good enough for engineering to start working on it. So they got it and they knew, okay, so we need the project title, we need to bring the project title, the, the user, that it's the owner of this project, the update and the number of completed tasks and pending tasks. And they started building and at the same time, I went through the design iteration after design iteration, working with the PM to make it as good as possible. And at some point we even had to pivot because we turned this into a premium feature and it went smoothly for some reason. This was one of the biggest success in monetization that we ever had at Asana. And what I want to center is how did we make that design successful? How did we work as a team to bring the best design that I could deliver in this case? So what we have at Asana when you join is the design crit. It's a scary at the beginning because it's a way that I never worked before. Usually in the past, what I will do is I will go to the PM when they give me a briefing and I will, this is my idea, this is what I did, and that PM will tell me this is good or this is not good, you gotta change this and that, and I want you to do this. And that was a very up-down conversation. It was like, I did something, I show you what I did, and you tell me if it's good or not. So I was not in a position of, of power. I had to defend my designs and discuss like, no, but this is gonna work because I know this is gonna work, this because I'm the designer. And it was like a constant battle at Asana, what you have in Design Create is you get into a room with all the product team. You have, the, uh, you have the, some engineers sometimes, you have the project managers, user research, 
and all the design, all the designers there. So you're showing it, at the beginning it was like 10 people, now the team has doubled, we're at more than 20 in a room, and you're showing your design. You show whatever you have, whatever in any, prom, in, in any given point through the project. It can be very soon, or it can be almost uh, finished. So what you do is you show it, and you tell them, I need feedback on this and that. I'm not sure about the colors, I'm not sure about the, type, the font. I want you to tell me if this is easy enough to understand. And then people around the room will raise their hands and they will tell you, I think that this is confusing or this color is strange to me. Are we using this in, the, in our style guide? And a key point in here while you're listening is you realize that people is not using absolutes at all. This is not right or wrong. Whenever I'm, say, I'm giving feedback to someone, I will tell them, I don't understand this. I'm, this is not what I was expecting when I clicked that button. Or this color makes me feel it's dangerous, but it's not actually. So you're there with your design on the screen and people talking to you. Your natural reaction from the point that I was coming from, from previous experiences is, now I have to tell them, no, this is gonna work because I know it. I'm a designer, I, I've, been doing, I've been working on this for a long time and I know this is gonna be successful. But what you have to do in reality is you shut up. You just don't say anything. You let them like say whatever thing they wanna say because it's their opinion. They know what they're talking about, but it's not an absolute. It's just someone's opinion. The best thing, it becomes at the same time it's a democracy. So say for example, somebody says, I wasn't expecting that that button will get me to a different page. So around the room, if anyone agrees, we'll say plus one. It is a funny way of, of explaining it. You gotta be in the room to realize how that feels. Like you hear someone saying, I don't understand that button. And you'll say, you hear like five people say plus one. And at that moment you realize, oh, probably this button is not right because 25% of the people in the room are telling me this. So meanwhile, all of this is happening. Your PM is typing all that information in a task that will give back to you. So you're getting a lot of information. You're just listening. You don't have to defend your designs because you did it. You're the designer. You're the responsible for them. And we hire you because we know you're good enough to do those designs. So you shut up. And what happened is, Afterwards, you will get with your PM and you will talk like, is this, is this working or this button? Do you think that we should follow this feedback? And usually it's like, oh, five people said that it's confusing. Probably we should change it. <coughs> or seven people said that this is a great background color, so we should definitely keep that. And what you do at that moment is you as a designer and probably teaming up with your PM most of the time, you decide if you want to action on that or not. Maybe that button takes you to a different page that you actually want to keep it because you know something. You have way more background than the rest of the team and you think, I'm going to keep this button here because I know something you don't. So after all, it's like a democracy where everybody gets to vote. Everybody gets to tell you your opinion, like their opinion on something. But in the end, in the end, at the end of the day, you are responsible for your designs. If you want to be successful, you want to have a successful design actually, what you're gonna do is probably you're gonna follow the recommendation of the big part of the team. If only one person said that that color wasn't good enough, that's up to you. Maybe you don't have to listen to them. Or maybe that person saw something that nobody else did and you follow that feedback and end up with a better design at the beginning. Or sometimes you will follow it and it leads nowhere and then you start over again and just discard the feedback. And after this process, what you do is you can repeat it over again. You present on one given week, you have 15 minutes to do a presentation, you go really fast, you get feedback, in, in 10 minutes you've got feedback about something that you've been working for two weeks. And then you have to do whatever you do with it. You can decide, you're free to do whatever you want. And what I wanna do today, so you can see how this works, is, is make, like improvise a design create here right now. Okay, um, so I'm gonna show you a design. Um, 
and you're gonna tell me what you think about it. Uh, you can say it in Spanish, don't worry about it. Just say anything, any opinion that you have about it, just raise your hand and say it. And if you agree with anyone in the room, say plus one. Like, it's, it sounds silly, but you'll see how effective it, can, it becomes. So I'm gonna show you the design. The best thing of this is like, since you're giving me your opinion and it's, it's yours and yours only, it's not hurtful. It's, if this is confusing, it's not your fault as the fault of, of the designer, it's just confusing to one person. So you're not targeting the person. You're saying, I think, I feel, to me. So I'm gonna show you the design. It's not actually design. I want you to create the hat that I'm wearing today. Okay, this is why I'm wearing a hat. This is not. Uh, just an accessory of fashion. I brought it just for this. So now you go around. Anyone has an opinion? Probably the guys at the back have an opinion because they're my friends. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I know. Don't worry. But that's too late. I didn't. Okay, we're not getting feedback about the slides. That, that happens every time. You'll show a design and somebody will give you feedback about something that you're not asking for. It's like, that button is like, that button is not in the design. <laughs> but thank you, i note it. We're not gonna do anything on it. So, come on, anyone, like, the feedback about the, the hat, about the color, is it, do you think it's comfortable? Do you think it's useful? Do you think it's nice, it looks good on me? Come on, don't be shy. This is like, anyone? <laughs> Of, 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 Asana, of, of a Star Wars, it's actually in the style guide of Asana. We have gradients and, and purple to, to, to orange, I think, and it's kind of fun. Anyone else? We need you to engage. What's on this side? On this side. This is, that also happens in design crate. People will ask for clarifications. That's when you don't shut up anymore and you explain it. This is the Empire uh, logo. So it's a bad thing. It's negative. Come on, anyone else? Fits your presentation. What? Fits your presentation. It fits my presentation. Thank you. That's good. Anyone agrees with that? Do you think it's needed inside the room? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna take. Okay, there's a plus one there. <laughs> Two plus ones. Okay, there's three, four people. Okay, good. And there was a lot of laughter, so I, I get that as like a general plus one. So I want to take that as like a, the whole room thinks that this is a thing. Anywhere else? Any, any other thing? No? Okay, so I just showed, I just listened to your opinions and some opinions that were not about the thing that we were talking about. And I actually talked too much, but I was supposed to like get that feedback. And now I want to analyze that. So, um, you say like, it's not necessary, maybe it's not necessary inside the room. I think that everyone agrees on that. So probably everyone agrees that it's not necessary to wear a cap inside of a room. And maybe I have a background that you don't have. Maybe I'm just growing my hair back and I'm at a weird state between like short hair and long hair. <laughs> and I'm gonna cover it up. So that's the reason. So, so now like me, so I am the one making the decision, taking like the last steps. Like, so I know that it's not necessary. So the wisest thing to do will be like to take it off. So I want to follow the democracy level. I'm going to take it off. <laughs> but you saw how, how this works. Like he, he actually never said anything about me or about this is not successful. Like he voiced it in a way that it was, is it necessary? Is this necessary? And everyone agreed. So. Me, I take the action, I analyze it, and I, I take the action. So what ends up happening is when you're there in those crits getting feedback, you become part of the team, but you're still yourself. So you're still your own person making your own choices. You're empowered to do that. You're, you're actually, you, people want you to make those decisions on your own. Because if you don't, you're gonna be like creating meetings having more and more meetings every week, doing more things that you, you shouldn't be doing, like wasting your time in a room with seven other people to make a decision while they, give you, like, they can give you that feedback in five minutes and then you make a decision. Because if we hire you, it's because 
we trust you. You should be good enough to do so. And as part of that team, we, we work together to achieve that goal. And we don't compete with each other. Designers help each other all the time. Designers are in the room to give you feedback. Uh, engineers do the same thing. They work together. They like help each other. No one is competing, even project managers, everyone. And what I love about it is this democratic mix, mix of democratic and empowering. It's like you do what you want, and at the same time you hear what the public has to say about it in a nice way that is not offensive. It's like, this is not, you did something wrong. No, that's not the goal. That's not what we're going for. It's like you did something, it's not working. Maybe you should fix it, but it's up to you. And at the end, we are free to do what we do best. In my case, I'm, my, one of my best skills is visual design, user interface more than user experience. So I get all the feedback from user experience and I usually follow it. While the user interface, I know that I'm more my own captain there and I can make my own decisions. I feel confident in it. And my team trusts me to do so. And we end up winning as a team and we learn as a team because failure, the yeah, end, sometimes like you do a design and it doesn't work. Failure is not, a, it's not, an, it's not a thing, it's a factor. It's not defeat. You fail at something, you know something that you didn't know before that, and you improve on that. So to uh, wrap it up, this was pretty fast, I think. Um, the conclusions that I got there. So as you remember, when I started, I was fired two years ago. I thought that I wasn't good enough. I thought that my designs uh, were not up to the standards that I was supposed to be, to be given. And I ended up joining a different company, starting with a different process that at first felt like painful, like you're there presenting your work and you don't get to defend it. You get to just listen to people. But the good thing is like the liberating thing is you do whatever you want with that feedback. You don't have to do anything. So we're, communica we're communicating with clarity. We're talking to each other from our perspective, saying this is what I think. And there's no friction in there. You do whatever you want with it. And we become more successful. And we end up being able to build like bigger and better projects. So that was it. And if you have any questions in any language, I'll be happy to answer them. Hope you liked it.